Hello everyone, I'm Rafael Alvarez and this is Alvarez Metalworks. Before we get started today, I wanted to give a special shout out to my channel sponsor, RorikSupply.com. They've been a tremendous amount of help to me when it comes to producing these videos for all of you. Check out RorikSupply.com. They have flap discs, cutoff wheels, grinding wheels, welding blankets, drill bits, burr bits, welding helmets, rowlock discs, you name it, the list goes on and on. Use coupon code METAL, save yourself 10% off anything that you order from them as many times as you choose to use that coupon code. That's my thank you to you for supporting my channel. With that being said, let's get to work. So here's the basic design. Now I drew this up in Photoshop real quick. Um, it's not set in stone as you, you'll see when I build this. You know, I make some changes to it. But this just gave me an overall idea of what I wanted to do visually. So the cabinet that is going to be used I got from Home Depot. Um, I initially wanted to go with something smaller than this. This is their 7 drawer cabinet. It's rated at 1,000 pounds. Um... I was looking for the one that's smaller, the six drawer one, <clears throat> but there was some issues over at our local Home Depot and ultimately what ended up happening is they couldn't find the five that they had in stock, <laughs> something happened to them. So they gave me these two at the, at the same price as the, the smaller cabinet. So I had to jump on the deal. Okay, so let me start by saying that I'm, I'm still very sick. Um, so I apologize about me gasping for, for breath. Part of it's because I'm fat and part of it's because I, I just can't breathe very well right now. Um, so what I'm doing here is right now I'm, I'm taking my, <clears throat> my cold saw, my cold dry saw, and I'm mocking it up so that I got the stopper there on the right so that I'll be able to consistently cut each piece. Now, what I will say is that a saw like this comes in real, real handy over a, a standard abrasive chop saw. Um, there's very, very little, if any at all, blade deflection on these types of saws. And I noticed that it improved my fit up tremendously using this. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, I will be doing a review, a, a more extensive review than the one I put out earlier um, about this saw. A little bit down the road, I'm actually waiting to hear back from a friend who purchased this exact same saw at the same time I did mine, um, but he had a problem with it, so I'm waiting to hear back from him as far as how the company dealt with him and, and how everything worked out on that end. But so far, so good with mine. Um, a few drawbacks, but nothing major. Um... So, I'm just chopping up all these pieces. All these pieces are, are for the two frames on both carts. Um, I'm cutting them all up at the same time. And right here you see that I'm fabbing up the sides of the frames. Um, which would be the front and the back. Not, not the side to side ones. Or the front and the back portions. So, just laying them out here on the table. Tacking them all together. I'm not fully welding any of this stuff up until the very end. Um, even though everything seems to be fitting up good, it's always important to just tack it up. There's nothing more exhausting and, and motivating or a motivation killer than fully welding something up and realizing you made a mistake. Um, and I know you can see the first cart there in the background <clears throat> that's done or fairly close to done. Um, when I was putting that one together, I noticed that I had taken one of the sides and and welded it on upside down and that kind of bummed me out but it was thankfully it was only tacked so right here what we have is this is the base so the area where I have that flat piece of metal you know the the longer piece of two by one by two tubing that is where the sides will attach to <clears throat> so the front and the back of the cart see how I have it mounted up right here um, the tops of these these side panels that I'm, I'm putting on now they have a 45 degree miter cut to avoid having any open ends at the top at the bottom I just did the you know the standard butt type joint there because the open end on the bottom of the cart doesn't really matter it's not visible <clears throat> I could have mitered it but it would have been just more work and 
a headache not worth it. So now that I have the, the two sides tacked into place, I'm starting to work on the top, you know, top brackets to connect them all. I'm checking square constantly, trying to make sure everything is, is still lining up the way it should be. Um, I'm clamping here down at the bottom, getting ready to spin it around. I would have done that earlier, but what happened was is I tacked the damn thing to the table. So <laughs> I said, okay, well, we'll worry about that later. I didn't want to pull it apart trying to yank it and pull on it. Um, wanted to get that top brace in first. So again, just lining up everything. I'm using my, my pipe clamp to, to span that whole distance. If you guys don't have any pipe clamps in, in your shop, it's definitely something worth, worth its money. So, right here, what I'm using is my Everlast Power Plasma 50 to cut out all the panels, the pieces that I'm going to need for the casters, as well as for the top support for the tank and on one of the carts, the on that top support is going to be TIG rod holders. So, I'm just cutting out all the pieces, every single one of them. I'll be grinding them down, knocking off the slag, getting them all prepped so that this way, throw the card up on the table, and then just start tacking everything together and getting everything done as far as that's concerned. So, right here is the top support. <clears throat> You've got the, the half round in there. I actually made that to 9 inches, even though the tank is not 9 inches in diameter. So that this way, if I ever wanted to get a much larger tank, that I had the ability to do so. Um, using my new Metabo 4.5 inch angle grinder to grind off the slag and clean up the, the cut edges. Um, my old Nikita one burned up, as those of you who have followed my channel saw. If you haven't seen that, go check out the video. Um, this is the, the new grinder to replace that, so... I'm going to be taking this piece over here to the drill press and using some tungsten carbide cutters to cut out the holes in only one of them so that I can put the, the TIG rod holders there. So for those that don't follow my channel, these tungsten car, carbide holes, hole cutters, I did a, a more in-depth review comparison of um, the Sterrett one that I'm using here and a Chinese brand called Plum Garden, which I got off Amazon for dirt, dirt cheap. It was a, a pack of six of them, six different sizes for much cheaper than the one Sterrett one. So ch be sure to check that out. Now what we're looking at here is the completed top rack for the, for the TIG rod holder. You see that two of them are larger than the other six. That's for a reason. I lost the video footage, so I can't show you guys the assembly, but I think you get it. Um, right now I'm cutting the larger, the two larger, um, TIG rod holders. And this is inch and a half inch PVC that I picked up from Home Depot. Um, you know, all of these are being cut for the 36 inch long, uh, fill rods. So, I'm cutting the full lengths, I'm cutting a, a section, a little riser section for the caps. <clears throat> Again, I apologize about all the clearing my throat. I, I'm, I'm actually really sick, so I'm just trying to get this video done for you guys. So I'm assembling the cap here, a little screw-on deal. And then you got the bottom cap for the other one, but you can't put that on yet. We'll walk over here to the, the cart, and I'll show you how that goes on here. So tap it on with the mallet. That's very important because if you're not, you're not going to get them fully on there. They're going to come apart. Right there, I'm going to be putting a two-part epoxy, which should hold the tube as well as that threaded cap. Um, you see here how much they stick out. On one side, we're going to have for um, 1 16th, and the other side will be for 3 seconds. exact same tick rods. So, you know, we'll, in the larger containers, we'll have, you know, the mild steel rod and... The, and then the smaller ones will have some aluminum, some stainless steel, and, and some silicon bronze. I figured it would be important for me to make sure that I got everything that I need, for the most part, for a real common type jobs, right there on the cart, ready to go, so that I don't, I don't have to worry about where am I going to store this at in my shop. So these, these three caps are for the smaller ones. 
Unfortunately, um, Home Depot didn't have the exact same fittings for the di two different sizes of tubings. So the cap designs are slightly different. And the threading on these smaller ones is an MPT style. So what that means is they're designed, the MPT threading de is designed to get tighter as you screw it on there. So I'm only able to get about three full threads before it starts to tighten up on me. And you don't want to try to crank it down because you'll never get them off of there. So, but it's fine. Three threads is fine. It's just a cap just to keep debris from being getting inside of the tubes. So now what we're looking at here is the cart sitting up on my welding table um, with the eight TIG rod holders already installed and glued into place. Now if you look here at the bottom, I've got um, some spacers there. What those are are the one by two inch tubing that I use for this some scrap. That's basically the ride height that this thing's going to be sitting at. Two inches off the ground. It's actually going to be just a hair shorter than that because of the casters. But that's basically where it's sitting at. So I've got it blocked up there so that i got a little bit of room to work. And what I'm going to be doing is installing the the rack, the tank rack on the back and the caster mounts and the, and the, you know, the caster mounts for the front as well. Now these gussets that you're looking at, these gussets are actually scrap left over from the trussle table desk custom desk that I'm building and right here is a good look at you know the TIG rod holders so these casters are the casters that came with the the toolboxes so that's awesome so they're rated for a thousand pounds <clears throat> actually I think they're rated for higher than that but the box is a thousand so the top gusset will be roughly about right here and then what we have is this bottom plate here where the caster will mount onto. And then, you know, the caster mounts from the bottom of it, obviously. And then it will drop down from there into the tank tray. The tank tray actually sits flush with the bottom of the, the cart. Okay. <clears throat> so it'll be welded right along there. And this piece right here is the vertical piece that goes from the tank tray up to the caster mounting plate nothing special there um, i'll have some one inch flat bar that that goes across the front of the tank tray to keep the the tank from sliding off and the other side's just basically the same thing right here what we're doing is i'm going to be cutting that edge off of there that little sharp point off the gusset on all the gussets i'm going to want it to look like this where it's a square cut and that's that's basically it. Nothing nothing special there. So now if we come over here to the first cart that I built, this is basically the completed first cart for the Power I MIG 200 MIG welding cart. Um, and we we look at the gussets here. Obviously the top didn't need the TIG rod holders, but if we look down here at the bottom of the tray, you can see how this will be assembled. Um, now I got to do a little bit more work on here to clean this up because my angle grinder burnt up in the middle of, of building this so I didn't grind down all the welds that I wanted to. Um, right here where I'm showing you I'm going to be drilling some half inch holes just so I can use some um, ratchet straps to hold the tank down. Um, didn't want to use chains. I figured the ratchet straps would work better plus it clears the TIG rod holders um, a lot better on this design over here. So again, I lost some footage, but here's me assembling the, the last half of the tank tray and the caster mounts on the, on the rear of the cart. Um, you saw that the caster went underneath that caster mount with a little bit of ease. There's a little bit of a gap there, so the actual whole cart was going to sit, you know, maybe about a quarter of an inch lower, maybe not even that. Um, just squaring things up and just getting them all tacked into place. This is pretty critical in this area because you don't want your casters to be towed out or anything like that. Now, unfortunately, I lost the part of the footage where I show you, show me mounting the casters on there, but it's just a bit of measuring. Make sure they're straight. Make sure, again, like they're not towed out or towed in and, and you won't have any issues. This is the strap for, you know, just to kind of hold the tank in, in its tray just in case it starts bouncing around in there. And this is actually the MIG cart without the, the gussets attached to it yet, but this gives you an idea of the way it looks underneath um, the tank tray so that you, you can see that. 
So here on the front, it's pretty bare bones basic. We're not doing anything special over here. Just a couple attacks to hold that plate level where it needs to be. I've already got it all pre-marked out. I'm um, struggling a little bit to get this side lined up because when I tacked the first side, it wasn't per sitting perfectly flat, so I'm fighting the tack. But that's the whole point of just putting a tack weld so that you can kind of bend it and maneuver it into place. Um, now we got to take the gussets here. We're cutting the, the inside corner of the gusset off so that it clears the tacks I just put on there. Um, I'm not going to use these gussets as, as a true 90 degree square because they're, some of them aren't because they're just drops from another job. And I'm using the magnet to hold them flush up against the, the cart frame and then using an actual square to square them out. And then putting a tack where the magnet was, removing the magnet, and then filling in this bottom corner. And then I'm going to come up top here and tack at the end of my weld where I want to cut the top of that gusset off. So and on here on the other side, just rinse and repeat, nothing special, just assembling. It goes as fast as you want it to go. <laughs> so here's the, the finished MIG cart. Now the TIG cart, I didn't have any still images of it before the toolbox was put into it. So this is all I had to show you guys, but it's, it's the same basic concept, same design, you get it. Um, when we first put this, to, or when I first put this together, me and my daughter decided to try to drop the the tool chest inside of it with it sitting right here in this position. Damn near broke our backs trying to do that. That was rough. Um, when we did, when we installed the box in the TIG cart, we laid the TIG cart on its side and then slid it in, which was still a pain in the butt, but it went much easier. So here's both of the carts in their final stage. Now there's no paint on them, there's no um, lead holders on them, and the MIG cart still needs a little bit of grinding to be done on it, because that's, you know, I had to stop that one because that's when my grinder burned up. But this is basically all I'm going to show you guys. You guys get it, they're basically done. Um, I'm going to just use some black paint, probably, I don't know what color. And just spray bomb them, mask off the cabinet, spray bomb them, and be done with these things after I figure out what I want to do for the lead holders. So thank you guys for enduring my stuffed up, heavy breathing nonsense. I apologize again about it. I'm sick. I'm just trying to get you guys these videos, get them wrapped up so I can move on to other things. Um, thank you for the support that you guys give me. And like always, subscribe, comment, like. And check out Roark Supply to get your 10% off anything you order for them by using coupon code METAL. And that's it. Talk to you guys later.